Hey folks and welcome back to the channel. Now in this video we're going to be taking a look at some of the new features that have come along in the 41.73 update which was recently pushed to the stable branch of Project Zomboid. So no more having to switch to the unstable build to try out those new brush tools. Anyway, if you find this video interesting or learn something you didn't know before, drop the video a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more Project Zomboid tips, updates and gameplay. Now with 41.73 came a whole raft of small UI changes, quality of life additions and bug fixes. Honestly the amount of bug fixes alone was incredible so there's a lot that I just can't cover in one video. So there's going to be a link in the description to the full patch notes if you're interested in giving those a read and I'm going to start by quickly brushing over the main additions that came with this build. Then I'm going to get into something a bit different that I cannot wait to show you. So first and foremost you can now see other players on the map when playing multiplayer. This is up to the server host as to how this is used. There are three options here in total, which include not seeing any players on your map, seeing all players on your map, or seeing those in the same faction or safe houses as you on the map. Admins can see all players on the map by default, which as a server owner myself, I can tell you this is a godsend for things like events or working out which areas aren't being used as much by our players. So yeah, you might be able to see where your friends are now when you're exploring Kentucky. Empty bottles can now store gasoline, which I know is something players have been after for quite some time now. This is likely arriving now in preparation for the addition of liquid mixing and the new liquid transfer system that's planned for build 42. With that in mind, when you're transferring gas into a generator, the tooltip has now been updated to show the percentage increase upon adding that fuel. There's also a new volume slider in the audio options for the infamous jump scare sound. And I know I've had complaints about this sound in my comments before, so I guess it'll be nice for that option to be there for all of you guys. Thanks to Mr. Pat Bren, there's now nine different maps that cover the entirety of Louisville, which have been added to the loot tables. There's also annotated maps left by other survivors to be found within Louisville as well. And on the audio side of things, we now have a brand new action music track. There were some fixes to zombie sounds that were caught in a loop with impact sounds, and there's new ambient sounds added when you're using a gas to go pump. Now for all the chefs out there, there's a plethora of new culinary items to go out and discover. From new recipes like onigiri, biscuit dough and meat patties, all the way to evolved recipes that can have things added onto them, like ice cream with candy and fruit, or whole pizzas with various toppings. To go with that, bologna and salami can now be sliced, bread can also be put into a toaster to make toast, and there's now a condensed milk item that can be substitute for milk in some recipes. There's also a whole lot more in here listed in the patch notes, so give those a read, or just get out there and start cooking. Oh, and just before I jump into the big ticket item for today's video, those of you that run mods will be very pleased to see that you can now find a list of mods being used in the pause menu. When an error is reported, you can go to the list and find exactly which mod has caused that error. It's nifty stuff and great for finding which mod is giving you issues so that it can be removed from your playthrough. So for a large part of the video so far, you've been watching the feature that I really wanted to talk about in today's video and honestly, I am beyond excited about this one. As a creator with a community and a whitelisted server that many of my community choose to play on, we're always trying to achieve new things to keep people interested in being a part of what we've built. Whether that's holding events at the end of a playthrough right before the next wipe, or having our server enrichment team put down little puzzles, stories, or easter eggs for players to find and follow during their time on the server. Up until now, one thing that has been incredibly difficult to do, and was always crazy levels of time consuming, was all things building. Anything we built Built, we were limited to using the in-game crafting system to do it, or giving ourselves items and placing them. Well, thanks to the new brush tools, that's all changed, and I could not be happier. If you have access to admin controls, all you need to do is open the admin menu, go to your admin powers, and tick the brush tools box. From there, just right-click anywhere on the screen, and you'll see a new option in the drop-down list for opening the brush tools manager. Essentially, this gives you access to most of the tile sets that the developers have used in the creation of the map. Whether it's from a gas station, a general store, or a military base, most of it is there. Now, don't get me wrong, I think there are some changes that could be made. So far, I've found it a bit tricky navigating and searching for what I want, so the implementation of a tag system could be incredibly useful for these new brush tools, specifically when it comes to finding what you're after. In order to place objects on an upper level, debug mode is needed to step up and down in elevation, so something built into admin mode to combat this would be really nice too. 
too. With that said though, the new system alone is incredible and drastically cuts the time it takes to craft custom areas as an admin. I was able to create a couple of survivor refuge locations in say 20 or 30 minutes each. To be honest, with more time and familiarity with the new tools, I'm sure I could do a much better job too. And I know there's some people watching right now thinking, great, but I'm not a server owner, I'm not an admin, how does this impact me? Well, the average player might not be interested in using the new brush tools, but whether you're playing on our Patreon server or any other server with an active community of admins, you're likely going to see a lot more custom structures being built over the next few weeks and months. This new system is a massive step in the right direction for dedicated communities to build their own sections of the map, their own events and scenarios, and ultimately more things for players like you to find. With that in mind, if you're an admin or a server owner yourself, or even just someone with a creative mind, let me know what you'll be building or would like to see built with these new brush tools. Let me know in the comments and maybe we'll have some ideas to share with each other. Special thanks to all of my existing patrons for their support and for playing on our whitelisted server, which will be making a lot of use of this new system. Of that, I'm absolutely sure. If you're interested in joining them, there's a link in the description for that too. Thanks folks, and I will see you all in the next one.